Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hey, everybody. Go ahead, click the share button. Um, it's an incredible day in the Lord. Yes, absolutely. Regardless of what circumstance looks like and what circumstance says, turn off the news, turn on the gospel. Yes. Crank on some worship music. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. rejoice and we will be glad in it. So go invite your friends. Come on in. Let's have a little bit of word and a time of fellowship together and see Amen. what the spirit of the Lord would say to you today. Amen. 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 You have a scripture Where are we today? at? We're in Leviticus. We're in Leviticus and, and I'll, I'll confess something. I, um, I think I got ahead, ahead. of, of hey, but you know everybody what? Let me else. tell you what it is. What you know is what it? it is? It's the prophetic gifting inside you. Well, you're always looking toward the future. That's part. That's a blessing and a curse <laughs> in a lot of ways. And to be very honest, so it's one of those things where I'm not 100% sure. Right. And maybe if you're a part of Restoring Hope and you're doing the daily reading, you can shed some actual light on this. Where I am, I. <laughs> I think I've gotten ahead of everybody, and it was because I. Well, I we're got, always thinking that way. Well, I know? I read. I was just reading one day, and mm. I went through the list, and I started marking my my uh, things off. Right. And um. And then I went, oh my goodness, I don't think I was supposed to read all that we yet. We may have to get you a new piece of paper. Well, it might not survive for the entirety <laughs> of the year. This, Listen, this is proof that I absolutely yep. am doing my Bible reading. It's ripping already. Those who have a worn Bible have a life that isn't. Has right? coffee stains on it because this is the first thing. I believe, and you know this about our household, just like we believe in giving the Lord the tenth of our financial increase, we believe in giving God the first portion of our day right. as well. And so we have a routine in the mornings yes. and we get up, we take the dog out mm -hmm. and Gideon gets to eat his food. And then while he's eating, we dive in and dig into the word and it, Honestly, it sets the course of your day. Right. Um, we have said it from over and over and over since uh, we've we've been doing these programs. Can you believe it's been since the end of March already? We have been doing this crazy. Uh, all of those weeks. Crazy. It's it is absolutely crazy how quickly time has passed, and yet it feels like we're still stuck. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no, time is marching on, but yet we're still here. Right. Um, that's a little funny joke. You're supposed to laugh at that if you're not. Um, but it's important to give God the first portion of your day, the, f the first uh, thoughts of your mind, the first words on your lips. The, listen, let the fruit of your lips bless the Lord. When you do that first things are first, it truly sets an order to the remainder of your day. So where I am <laughs> on Mondays, I, today I am in Leviticus 16 through 18. Right. And these are, these are difficult chapters per se, because it's... These sacrifices, there was such a way uh, Listen, to present them. He wasn't playing. Lots of uh, rules, regulations, and, and uh, you know, there was just certain orders that, that you had to present each sacrifice. Yes. It had to be a certain way. Um, and thank God that the ultimate sacrifice has been made that all we have to do now is believe. Uh, I've got one scripture verse. Go and, for and it. And you can um, read what, whatever that the Lord lays on your heart. But I just, I got so caught up in last week's program when you was talking about the blood, the blood. And, and that whole revelation that came through that. And this is just kind of something that's a little, uh, we can look at it in light of the new covenant direction, if you will, because okay. this, this uh, chapter, ver this chapter talks about eating blood forbidden. 
mm. is what the uh, verse 17 in what chapter? is about it's 17 uh, verse 7 or chapter 17 verse 11 yes it says for the life of a creature is in the blood for the life of the flesh is in the blood is and i have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Ooh, so I'm thankful for that atoning blood, blood uh, that's in Jesus Christ that, you know, when he gave his life on Calvary and he, he ratified a new way for you and I, we don't have to go through all of these uh, rituals. All we have to do is believe what he's done for us his is enough. His blood sustains his blood is his enough. life. Yeah. His blood is enough. And when we, when you have a revelation of what that means as a new covenant believer, the covenant of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we, you know, we, when we're, go we're going to minister on it, we're digging into it and we're studying some things out yeah. that has just floored us a little bit. Um, speaking of the new covenant and forming a new covenant right and how uh, we believe in this season and we we are back um, as often as the Lord leads us doing communion it there was a season when this uh, season hit we were taking it every single night absolutely and it was literally a guard oh absolutely. it was a guard at our house it was a guard here at this house it's a the guard in our mind our heart it really was yeah. the Lord said take communion until it was that pitching it really was there was <laughs> a, seal, the yeah. a ceiling of the cracks yeah and until and it was like I saw the dot 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 and we didn't know what was coming when mm. we started uh, kicking it off here at the church and then it carried on into the homes and what I love about the Spirit of God we don't pick up the phone and you know here's the problem with a lot of people not just ministers but I hear a lot of men well they're they're echoing everything that I'm doing no there's one spirit yeah. and let me tell you something those who are hearing with the spiritual ear are hearing what the Spirit, Spirit is, is saying, saying to Amen. the church. Nobody's yes. copying anybody. Yeah. And everybody wants to prove who did it first. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me clear the air. Uh, we, yes. we have a roadmap. We, we are everything that we've seen Him do, we should do. And even greater, He calls us to do a greater work in this day and in this hour. But this, there's one spirit with diversities of gifts. Yes. Pastor Aaron has taught that so eloquently over these last several months. If you've missed it, you can go back on Wednesday nights yes. and re-watch uh, the services on YouTube. It's probably easier to get to it that way. Uh, and we probably will group it and put it together on the podcast. Uh, the, the gifts that the, the teaching has been so rich, there are many gifts, yeah. but they are in operation of one spirit. one spirit. So when you see the spirit of God speaking a thing like take communion until, right. you see it. it exploded everywhere, everywhere in the beginning of this, of yes. this situation. You see it yes. everywhere. Why? Because somebody's copying another preacher? Well, no, the spirit of the living God right. is whispering instruction sure. into the ears of Whosoever. Well, and seeing it literally like you're walking out biblical prophecy. Yes. Like the Omega is, or the Alpha is connected to the Omega. Yes. Like we are, we are literally walking out that, you know, that Passover season and the disease that went throughout our country. Oh, my goodness. And people were marking their doorposts as literally. a literal sign of what God is protecting we still with and through. have those ribbons. We still have them on our, our mailbox. <laughs> we still have them on our doorpost. Yes, we and, do. And, uh, you know, it's not the ribbon that does no, a thing. It's but a it's symbolism. We're marking this territory to, to proclaim that we have decided to mm. use the blood. God has given us the ability to use the benefits, as we talked about last week, in His blood. 
you know, um, one of the scripture verses here, uh, and you can get back on what you were saying, but one of the scripture verses here, verse 15, it says, anyone, whether native born or foreign, yes. who eats anything found dead or torn by wild animals must wash their clothes and bathe with water and they will be uh, ceremonially unclean till evening. Then they will be clean. But if they do not wash their clothes and bathe themselves, they will be held responsible. And I so, feel- So tie that into New Testament. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Uh. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, that's the simple way of putting it, that God has given us the ability to be cleansed. How are we cleansed? Through Christ. I preached this uh, yesterday. Yeah, uh, I was going to get uh, into uh, that. Elisha, you know, he, uh, they went to Elisha. They looked at this place. They, it was a beautiful land. It was a beautiful, by looking, you would not believe that anything was wrong with the waters, that anything was wrong with productivity but the, the water uh, was poisoned. There was mm. poison in the water. And the only thing that could cleanse the water was the salt, which the was salt. In, in the new covenant, um, as it relates to you and I, that salt represents Jesus Christ. And he says that we are to be- The preserver. The salt of, of the and, earth. And, and the light of, uh, of the world. You know, we're, we're to be that salt, we're to be My that light, God. light you know. Uh, if the salt loses its savor, it says it's good for nothing but to be trampled on. Under the foot of man. Under the foot of man. But we see that when the salt hit the water, that what was dead came to life. My God. But see, we're too busy taking in dead things. But even though we have things taken in profit. things that do not profit, God still through His grace yes, he does. has given us a chance and the ability uh, to be cleansed through Christ Jesus. Zest. That's what I was going to say. Uh, yesterday's service was so powerful. Uh, the word was rich. The worship was just literally, there was a moment in here and we're, you know, we're opening up uh, this week again after um, all the craziness, but there was a moment, this, this room was very crowded. You yes. could feel the angelic beings almost being deployed in the atmosphere and taking it through the airways. Yeah. And um, it was so powerful. And you, you said some things, you, you, you mentioned a thing and, and here we are. And listen, some of you, we, you have despised and we all have despised this season that we're in to a certain degree but there are some things that God is trying to uh, teach us even in turmoil because right. he wastes nothing listen to me mm -hmm. he, he doesn't he doesn't cause these crazy things but there is a reshift and a refocus within a body of believers Yes, there are tribulations. Yes, there are afflictions. Yes, there is sickness and disease. Uh, yes, the enemy is unleashing everything that he has so true. to cause us to quit. I mean, he truth that that's it in oh, a nutshell. Yeah. He wants you to quit. And you said something, and Ecclesiastes says it, um, starting a thing is easy. Right. And you, you said this yesterday in your sermon, and there were a lot of things that stuck out to me, but this, this how we finish yes. determines truthfully who and what we are right. at the end of the day. Right. And I believe that there, we are in a season of aborting the mission. Yeah. Uh, whether, I mean, we're, we've seen it. Let's just be really honest from, from when this, you know, I believe March 22nd was our first service of going online here at Restoring Hope. And about a few weeks into that, there have been ministers of the gospel yeah. that they have vanished. Yes. And I'm not just I'm, I'm number one. I'm not going to drop names. No, 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 no. But number That's two, not the point. 
that's yeah. that's the truth. Yes. Like when I say they've just vanished, it's like one day they are preaching and they're getting ready to host a virtual revival, and the next day their board has shut them up. Yeah. Yes. Now, it's not for us to judge. It's us for us. It is for us to pray. Come if on. we cannot see that the enemy's ultimate goal is to abort the mission, to shut the mouthpiece, to destroy the integrity of God's house. Listen, that there's been one thing that we have learned in this pandemic is that, listen, a great falling away yes. is at hand. Yes. Well, and, and uh, I'll look back at this verse here in 15. It says, you know, it's talking about eating anything found dead or torn by wild animals yeah. must be wa they must wash their clothes they must bathe with water how many uh, things have we eaten of uh, that's been torn by wild animals that's been torn let's look at this as the world today yes. what are we eating what that's we wild eating? what are we eating that's dead works it's the it's our flesh works you know and and but w there's a way of cleansing. There's a way of escape. Thank you, God. I, I'm thankful for that. That even for those positions and those offices that, you know, the enemy wants to have his way yeah. with those ministries. There's still uh, hope yes. and destiny. Yes. Yes. And, and you're you're right, Pastor Amanda. We have to pray. Um, we have to pray for for these folks that uh, and surround them in prayer because. Uh, if I was the enemy, the <laughs> thing that I would want to do is shut the mouth mouthpieces, the mouthpiece of God, the, those vessels that God has called and God has ordained and God has chosen, uh, f not for not for yesterday's work, but for today's work. Mm. And, and the enemy knows it. Now God can use anybody; He yes. can use anything. But what a shame it is uh, for the enemy to destroy uh, what God designed for today. You know, that's in, in Ecclesiastes, one of the things that Solomon says in 5 and verse 6. He says, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Mm. And the, out of the abundance of Jesus. the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what happens is when we do turn ourselves over to vanity, this is one of the things that Solomon, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. When you turn your heart over to idols, when you turn your heart over to dead things, to empty and meaningless conversations. Right. And some of us, let's just uh, call it what it is. Um, you know, in, in, the, in, the God, in Timothy, in the New Testament, he, he's talking about people who are idle, but yet, and they're not busy about doing the work of the Lord, but they've become busy bodies. Mm, yeah. And I, yes. I fear that in this season, we have hit that mark of where there's a lot of lacks um, and, and we're just kind of doing our own thing and running our own rat race. And we have become uh, in the season of busyness, not truly being effective for the kingdom of God. And many have become busy bodies. And what do busy bodies do? They, in, they destroy the integrity of others. They've been feasting on dead things. And so we open our mouth and it causes our flesh to sin. My God. And we have to, I feel that. So, and I feel this pressure of the New Testament gospel, the teaching, you know, Paul wrote 13 epistles of the New Testament, such an incredible ministry um, that the Lord unfolded in this man who was a murderer. Um, when you really look at what God did, but there is warning after warning after warning after warning that I cannot help but it ringing in my ears in this day. And it's almost sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Warn the people. Right. We are in a season. If there really is a great falling away, as the word of God says. Yes. If it, if it would be so that even the very elect would be deceived. Right. Let's talk about the spirit of anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. The spirit of anti-Christ is really the gospel of self. Yeah, right. 
uh, the feel the feel good gospel, the feel good prophecy. It's not even this. And here's the thing: it would be something very closely aligned uh, with Scripture, right. as Satan himself we saw in Matthew four, right. quoting Psalms ninety one, the verse and chapters that we have all been standing on during this pandemic. Yeah. Satan opened his mouth and, well, listen, just cast yourself down from here. Yeah. He'll keep his angels charge over you and your foot will not even dash against that stone. Yeah. That's the word of God out of a wrong source. Sure. The spirit of antichrist is constantly leading back to self. Sure. How I feel. Right. What I want. Yes. What is best for me? Yeah. Mm, man. That's the spirit of Antichrist. And that's how in the gospel of, of 1 John, he says there are many Antichrists. Right, right. And there is one Antichrist, but the spirit of the Antichrist yes. is already here. Yes. I can promise you. And here's the thing that is terrifying to me is a lot of it is setting in churches all across America. Yeah. And the word of God says he's coming to judge his house. Right. His house. That's good. I mean, and, and it's... That's it, heavy. It's so true because uh, you can feel, you can feel that that spirit is roaming to and fro. Uh, the, the spirit of Antichrist, I think about in ministry, and we've seen it for years. It's not just today, but, but it seems like there's an abundance of... Um, of the enemy's tactics, his schemes, his tricks. It's like he's pulled out his heavy stuff. Yes, he has. You know, and, and it's, it's, I think about Paul, you know, when they're in the streets and that woman of divination comes. Acts 16. And she says, you know, she says, these people are the most high God. What she said was correct, but it was the wrong spirit. So you preached and, that last Wednesday night, and that was an incredible, incredible word too. Right. And, and let's talk about that because I feel like that's where even the elect potentially being deceived. And here's the deal. Guess what? We all have to guard our hearts. We have to and guard our, minds. our hearts. That would came. We yeah. all, we all yes. used to, uh, on Sunday, you say, examine us. Guard oh our God. hearts, Father. Examine us. Yep. We have to live in the spirit of repentance yes. and self-examination yes. to make sure that we there is no selfish agenda. It has to be a clean stream, especially the today. Clean stream. It has to be clean. Ooh. It cannot be contaminated for God to do what He wants to do in this last day, in this last hour. It won't work today. It might have worked last season, but it's not going to work today because of the falling away, because we are getting so close to the end uh, people will be deceived. Listen, listen what the great apostasy in 2 Thessalonians 2 says. Let no one deceive you mm. by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Yes. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who, expo who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. And listen, there is a great falling away. And what he was saying in Acts 16, we see Paul and Silas yeah. who have just joined forces, really. They just met up, right? Right, right yeah. In Acts 16, they didn't know each other beforehand. They had not been longtime right. laborers in Christ. They just met up. Right. And they're ministering the gospel. And this, this woman, literally, now listen, these these are men of the Most High God telling us the way to be saved. Right, right. Sounds good. Sounds amazing. Sounds right. But here's the deal. But she was a fortune teller. She was telling it from the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. And Paul being used by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost that was on the inside of him, with that gift of discerning of spirits, the gift of discerning of spirits, um, it ignited on the inside of him. So he, he, he saw what was inside of her. God revealed it through the Holy Spirit as the Spirit wills, as My the God. scripture says. And so we have to be attentive. We have to be yielded to the Spirit, yes. you know, and so many times our soulless realm gets in the way of that well, so yieldedness. I was say, Paul uh -huh. 
had he not been filled with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. that could have been flattery to his ministry oh. and could have allowed her to mm. just run and be, go, go be my media person. Right, right. Go run and tell everybody who we are and what we're here to do. Mm. But you see, you don't have to announce the anointing. Right. Amen. He didn't need an announcement. Sure. You know why? Because he operated in power. Right. He didn't just come in word. Right. He came in power and demonstration. Yes. It, he didn't need a forerunner to go put it in the newspapers. Right. He didn't need a busy body. A busy body. That's right. Go tell everybody who I am. No. Yeah. It, it's so true. And and because of the Holy Spirit, it manifested the the senses of Jesus, the reality of Jesus, the same person that would walk through the streets and could cast out devils and see things and hear things in the spirit. That, that, that gift of discerning of spirits is insight. It's, it's insight. spiritual insight. It's, it's uh, background knowledge or uh, behind the scenes knowledge, if you will, of what the enemy's doing, but not only what the enemy's doing, what God is doing. Yeah. You know, and so I think uh, that's one reason that God has placed that, those gifts upon my life uh, in this season is because he wants us to know what is taking place. He wants us to know how to, when these things come into to us uh, by way of the Holy Spirit, that we know what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we know what's going on. We're, we're aware, okay, God is using this as a gift of discerning of spirit. I can see that thing. I can hear what, what's going on. There's a miracle God wants to do over here. God wants to heal somebody over here. He wants to give this person wow. a word of wisdom for his future and for his destiny because he needs it. You know, he's at a place where he needs that word of wisdom. And, and we see Paul operating in this Holy Spirit that he had just come in contact with, you know, on on that that road of Damascus when when God uh, got a hold of him and yes. changed his perspective and changed his sight, and now he's operating in this and he's seeing uh, what it is. The, now we get caught up in the evil side of it, you know, and what's awesome about the gift of discerning of spirits, it's not always seeing the evil or revealing the evil. There's good. Absolutely. You know, we can sense when the Holy Spirit's moving in the house. We can see it. We can see the resurrected Christ. God can show us an angelic activity um, through the gifts of discerning the of gifts spirits. Of discerning of spirits. Yeah. But the, and I, I've heard it said a lot of times when we see only the negative and only the, the demonic, mm -hmm. we're staying real close to our flesh. Mm, that's good. <laughs> because it's not hard to see those things and encounter those things. But there are those moments like the boldness of Paul mm. in Acts 16 because it was to protect the ministry that he would leave Caesarea Philippi. Yes. Uh, because that woman was her goal yeah. out of that spirit that spirit, yes. not her, yes. was to gain the influence of the people. Absolutely. And they would have assumed by association that she, that she had the same gift that Paul operated right, in. Right, right. And she's the one announcing, she's the John the Baptist of Paul's <sighs> ministry. Yeah. And uh, listen, it did not, it, it, it didn't, uh, here's what it looked hopeless because that's the story where he turns around and he casts the devil out of her. And can you imagine in church today, well, that preacher went up and began casting a devil out of somebody who was acknowledging that they, that they had the anointing to tell us how to be saved. Right. But it was out of the wrong spirit. And the proof was in the pudding. When her boss, mm -hmm. <laughs> Couldn't make money on her no more. Right. Uh, he was he was the pimp of fortune telling. Yep. And he couldn't make money no more. Shut the business down. Shut the business down. But Paul and Silas got thrown in jail. Man, that's when you know revival's taking Ooh, place. Ooh, listen, listen. Yeah. Don't be fearful and don't get wearied when doing the right thing, when doing good. Paul and Silas get thrown in jail. Right. And the jailer, we know the story. They're singing at midnight, darkest hour of the night. And the jailer gets saved. His whole family gets saved. Right. God completely turned what the enemy meant to bring chaos and right. destruction right. And, and a spirit of control in right. a place. Right. God delivered a whole bunch of people. 
open the prison doors wide. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll do the same thing for you today. While these are trying times, these yes. are dark times, um, it's time for you to truly ask the Lord for that spiritual insight, that discernment, not to just discern the enemy's plans, but to discern God, what God's do you will. want me to What do? are you doing in this? And, yeah. and you know, some of the things that we've been studying uh, and that we'll, di we'll dig into later, the, the covenant of God and the return of Christ. And um, you know, as we said last week, not loving our lives mm -hmm. to death. I'm thankful for the life that the Lord um, has given to us, but truthfully laying our life down for the sake of the gospel is, um, it's not an easy task and it's not always the most pleasant. Uh, it will get you a lot of haters in this world yeah. because uh, listen, if they hated Jesus, he promised his disciples, his true disciples, if they hated me without calls, they will hate you too. Right. And so we have to learn how to balance those things and not just uh, honestly take it as a thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God, thank that you, you would trust us to walk this thing out. And um, there, this is a new day and it's a new hour. It and we need to be asking the Lord for these gifts yeah. to be able to operate in discernment, yes. to know when to, uh, you know, as, as Pastor preached on Sunday, to see the good in a place, right. but yet get to the root of the issue. Mm -hmm. We could only stay here for so long and thrive on the beauty of this place right. before this water would kill us. Right, the future's gone. The future's gone. Yeah. There yeah. is no the future seed, until we change this. Yes. And so would you just, give them a word of encouragement and declaration of a prayer to pray to yes. begin to ask the Lord for these things right. in our heart and in our spirit. Yes, um, I, I, I pray for, you, for the future mm. uh, productivity uh, progression because right now everything's on shutdown, especially the enemy has tried to shut down the church yes, as has. we've said shut down the voice of God. He's not so worried and concerned about uh, all the wonderful church we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about our lifestyle in Christ today. That's right. Because he's, he's after, he, it's not about us. It's about our children, it's about our grandchildren. And that's what God began to give to me uh, yesterday was that, you know, um, they went to the, the right place. They went to the right source. Um, and, and that's the thing that we have to realize is that a lot of times we want to go to someone else who can relate mm. uh, to what I'm going through. The but, busy bodies. But the relate is not what you need. You need to elevate. You need to mm. look up. You need to, you know, because look up to the hills. That's where the help comes from. It's so easy, but yet we neglect the easiest things that can really, truly make the way for well, us. Because you know, our mouth talks our flesh into feeling something different. Oh, absolutely, 100%, and I'm guilty of it, you know. Uh, but mm -hmm. but here's the thing, uh, God still has a plan, yes, He still he has does. a purpose. Yes, He does. His power is pouring out. Yes, what we have to pray for is clarity. clarity. We need to pray for these gifts to be manifested yes. in our lives, but, all, but most importantly, we need to pray for an uprooting of anything that would get in the way of the stream, that would be poisoning the flow of God's presence in our life. Uh, without fruit, uh, there's no flow, and, mm. and uh, true flow. There's no uh, nourishment you, for people. Without fruit in our lives, we cannot operate. You've heard me say this so many times, the gifts are not effect, but when you're in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control, listen, mm -hmm. uh, here's the thing. The enemy wants to take something that's happened to you and he wants to haunt you with it. Come on. Because if he can keep you in that place, you're st he can keep you stuck. stuck in the mud. He wants to keep you stuck in that dirty place. He wants to keep you stuck 
where you can move or operate Jesus. the way that God has designed and prepared a way for you to operate. And the enemy knows it, that if he can keep you on that wound, that if he can keep you on what was said to you, what was said about you, that if he can keep you on that generation, that thinking on, I'll never get past this because my father didn't and his father didn't. And, and I'll never get over, I, I might Change as well accept it, it that mm -hmm. I'm going to have to divorce at some point because it's all, through, all throughout my bloodline. The devil is a liar. Yes, you are is. the one that will conquer the curse. Break it. You are the one that will conquer the curse. Why? You're because you know this risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, you have the ability, you have the authority in the name of Jesus to uh, conquer the curse. And, and sometimes you've got to speak to it. Listen, sometimes you've got to speak to it when your mind's cloudy. Yes. Sometimes you've got to speak to it when the wind is blowing in your face and the storm is raging. Sometimes you've got to speak to it when disease is all around you. Listen, you've got to declare that healing. You've got to start speaking the word. Listen, if we don't stand on the word, the world will, will drown you but you have to have the word inside of you we have to we and we have to uproot these weeds and all of this stuff in our life that gets in the way of the word that is the lamp into our feet and the light into our path the word that when it's declared it literally devours the wiles of the enemy that pastor Amanda said it's that word coming out of a word the logos of God that can stab grief that can stab depression in the heart that can get rid of the oppression so Heavenly Father right now I just ask uh, and I just ask that this word, Father God, yes. I know we've kind of been, uh, we've, we've stayed in, the, in a theme and in a flow, but I just pray that it all connects right now to the ones watching. And I ask right now, Father God, that, that those who are, have been hurt, those who have been bitter, those who are living in that land of anger and resentment. I don't know why I'm staying here, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I was yesterday and the Lord had me here. But I believe that the body of Christ has been stagnant because they've been stuck in what happened to them. They've been stuck in being hurt. They've been stuck in some old habit or old, old haunt. Listen, the blood of Jesus has conquered it. Let's just go back where we started. Yes. Uh, atonement is in the blood of Jesus. Uh, the thing that will cover the cracks in your life is the blood of Jesus, just like that pitching covered the ark for Noah, just like that pitching covered the, the, the basket for Moses and, and kept uh, from the devastating uh, and the, 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 the disaster, the devastating waters and the destructive waters waters to get into the place. Listen, that bitter, those bitter waters trying to get into your vessel. Listen, the, we plead the blood. We yes, plead the blood of Jesus. And, and Lord, right now, yes. we just plead the blood over everybody watching. God, I, pr I plead the blood over yes, every God. mind, over every heart right now. And God, we just prophetically declare uh, that, Lord, we will be yes. fruitful. And, and Lord, we will be yielded to your Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you would, uh, Lord, help, help us to focus so much on what your word says about us. Lord, help us to be focused more on the direction and the leading of your Holy Spirit, Father God. Lord, that nothing can get in the way of what you are guiding us to, what your truth is leading us to, Father God. And Lord, we just uproot anything, God, that would be a barrier. We, we uproot anything that would be a dam. We uproot anything, Lord Jesus, that would be poison or contamination uh, in our stream, Father God. But we ask for clean streams in the season that we are living in. We ask for healing streams, Father God, that only comes from you. God, may we be a living sacrifice, a, a holy and acceptable, mm. Lord Jesus, yes, uh, for your service, Father God. We ask for that purification, God. Throw salt in us, Father God. Uh, purify our lives, Father God, we ask. Preserve our lives, Father God, uh, so that we can be used effectively in this day and this hour, Father God, where there's so much deceit and so much darkness and uh, distraction and chaos. And Lord, I just pray over every mind that's clouded right now, Father God. I pray over every soulless rim that's clouded. However, Lord Jesus, the enemy has positioned it to be where he can function in, our, in that soulless rim and get in the way of things, Father. We just break every yes, wall do, of the God. enemy. Yes, we we break through every 
cloud yes, of the enemy to follow the cloud in the glory of Almighty God. We break through uh, every limitation right now, Father God, and we ask, Lord, that you would manifest the reality of who you are. Uh, Lord, let your spirit, man, explode on the inside of us, Father. May we experience the fullness yes. of your Holy Spirit, Father God. May we uh, experience these nine gifts of the Spirit, God, that, that, that you have just exploded in my heart, exploded in my spirit, Lord, to, to get these gifts out as we continue in these gifts, God. I pray that it brings... Um, a fresh flow, God, a fresh, uh, a, um, a fresh touch, God, that it would explode in somebody's lives, Lord, that uh, not only did he use Paul and not only is he using the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists, but God, he wants to use each and every person as the Spirit wills. Yes, yes, and so, Lord, yes. we just ask for that. And we yes. give you all the glory and all of the praise, Father. And I just pray over any sickness right now. I feel like there's headaches. I feel like there's, there, there's somebody watching and you have just battled headaches in this season. And I just ask, Lord, Father, that you would ease that pain in the name of Jesus. We ask for blood pressure to go down in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask, Lord Jesus, for your healing touch yes, from the top of Ooh. every head uh, to the sole of every feet, every man, woman, boy, and girl uh, who can hear me right now uh, and who can hear Pastor Amanda. We agree together and we plead the blood over your home. Lord, we apply the blood over the doorpost of every watcher right now, Father God, that you are protecting them and keep them, keep, keeping them. We go back to those first works, Father. Uh, how we started this thing, Lord, is, is how we're going to finish this thing, Father. And it is only uh, in your blood that we can do this, God. The atonement is in the blood. The healing is in the blood. The protection is in the blood. We understand that your peace, Father God, is in what you did for us at the finished work at the cross of Calvary, Father. So we praise you and we honor you today, Father. And we give you all glory. And it's in Jesus' name we say amen. 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 Thank you, Almighty God. Come on, we just bless His name today. We rejoice. Yes. We're glad in it. Thank you, Father. This week, uh, Wednesday, we will be here 9 a.m. And then Wednesday night, if you are a part of our local church, uh, we will be having an outdoor Our service, service yes. if, if weather permits uh -huh. and uh, hopefully we can, uh, I'm not sure, I'm, I might be going on the limb, but hopefully uh -huh. we can have it um, outside, have it, have the video if you're not a part of our congregation, that way our online audience will still be able to be a part at 7 p.m. right here, Restoring Hope Church. We love you, your support uh, during this crazy season truly has sustained and carried the gospel. Yes, and Lord. we want you to know Thank that you, every life that is changed, every life that is surrendered to Christ, every body that is healed, you people every, of God. Every dream that comes to pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have put seed in the ground during this season, uh, this reward uh, will also go to you. And so know that you are laying up uh, your eternal treasuries yeah that one day when we stand before the Lord he will be able to show us each and everything that our life was laid down for so that somebody else could have that eternal life as well so thank you sustainers of the house of God yeah and I would also like to say I, I know that uh, and I'm not trying to put a commercial here but we're getting closer to overflow and so I just want to put that at the end of this program just so that it can be fresh on your mind uh, that it will start here in the next what a couple weeks it starts on the 22nd, yeah, the 22nd actually. so uh, we have some incredible the people uh, that will be coming for that um, I could list them all but you could actually go on our social media sites and see the list of mm -hmm. people that is coming I could tell you that uh, Pastor Kevin Wallace from Chattanooga Tennessee listen that ought to be enough for you to come uh, he's uh, a powerhouse for the kingdom of God such an anointed vessel but I love his heart you know yes we do he's and a so, dear friend to, so, to us personally as well as this ministry Ryan Lestrange Ryan Lestrange um, is coming my goodness listen if there was uh, such an encourager 
Yes. Pastor Aaron and I co-wrote our first book. Yes. And um, Ryan Lestrange has an endorsement in that, mm -hmm. as well as he he gave us the the subtitle for the book, um, and just a dear friend to us and and this ministry, Restoring Hope Church. He loves. Uh, the people here. He's awesome. He's incredible. That book will be releasing in, in August, by the way. It's uh, in the print stages. Right. And until you write a book, you have no idea the process that it takes. So kudos <laughs> yes. to all of you who manufacture Man, those babies go, out. Go get that too. Yes. Yes. Go, go, go pre You can pre-order it. And, and there's a uh, musical gift that will come uh, if you pre-order that now, and uh, we've got some signing to do. So <laughs> we're going to sign each pre-order uh, and give an actual, um, it's a song that's never been heard before. Um, I'm going to uh, release it for every pre-order. A song that hasn't been heard from here. Yes, fr from, from here. You've heard the song before. It's a wonderful song. Not going to give it away. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Tony but, Suarez will also be here. Yes. Overflow. Uh, Greg DeVries. Greg DeVries is coming. Uh, Deborah George will be here. Yes. Restoring Hope Worship. Yes. Pastor Aaron, myself, all of the leaders, and the body of Restoring Hope Church. We hope to see you here the 22nd through Sunday the 26th. Yes. We love you. Amen. We're going to see you Wednesday morning, 9 a.m., and then Wednesday night, 7 p.m. God bless you. God Have bless a great you. Day.